Hi, uh, I'm going to do this video on what we need to be focused on uh, during our persecution, which we're already being persecuted. It just hasn't gotten terrible, maybe for you. Some of you, it has. Some of you have already been thrown out of your job, thrown out of your home. Uh, so if persecution hasn't reached you yet, just praise God, okay, because it's coming. And we need to know how to what to focus on as we're persevering to the end, okay? As we endure on the narrow path till the very end, okay? I'm going to show you my paperwork. So in case you want to follow along. Oh, let's see if I can get that in there right. And you can do that. Okay, I hope you were able to see that. Okay, so okay, this is kind of taken off from my last video, but you don't need to have seen my last video to understand and appreciate and get strength and encouragement out of this one, okay? So let's go to Enoch 104, one to six. Remember, this is focused on what we should be focusing on as we're going through persecution because sometimes it's easy to forget when you're going through the hard times what awaits you. So you need to be focused on what your reward is, okay? Uh, I swear to you that in heaven the angels remember you for good before the glory of the Great One, and your names are written before the glory of the Great One. Be hopeful, for before you were put to shame through sickness and affliction, that's right, some of you are going through sickness and affliction. Remember the stuff they're spraying in the skies and the stuff that's coming out of your phones and your computers. Gee, and all the towers out there that are just spreading it. It's making people sick. You know, and the people that took the mark of the beast, they shed stuff. Stuff, they see, they're created um, these spike proteins that are always with them and that's why they're getting sick but it also can spread to us not the not that itself but these proteins and it can make you sick uh, so we are going to be suffering through sickness um, and afflictions of many different kinds uh, but now you shall shine as the lights of heaven you shall shine and you shall be seen and the doors of heaven shall be open to you and in your cry, cry for judgment, and it shall appear to you. For all your tribulations shall be visited on the rulers. So what you're going through, those that gave that to you, they are going to get their reward from Jesus. Or whether they're um, their wrath, the wrath of God from Jesus and on all who helped those who plundered you. So even people that say, hey, I just work at this hospital, or I just, I'm, just a, I, I'm just a manager at this job, I gotta let you go because you, know, you won't take that. Um, if they're hurting you because they're following the beast, they are gonna have to answer to God for that. Um, be hopeful. And do not throw away your hopes, for you shall have great joy as the angels of heaven. What will you do? Um, what will you have to do? You shall not have to hide on the day of great judgment, and you shall not be found as, as sinners. <clears throat> and the eternal judgment shall not come to you for all generations eternally. And now fear not, you righteous, when you see the sinners growing strong and prospering in their ways. Do not be their companions, but keep away from their violence. 
for you shall become companions of the host of heaven. So let's remember that, no violence. People that are talking about getting the, you know, bang, bang, <laughs> for when things go sideways, like they're gonna have to kill somebody, well, that's not you. You are not gonna be out there killing people, okay? You're not gonna kill people. So just get that out of your head. You can have one of those bang bangs if you wanna, for hunting animals to feed yourself. Uh, but don't plan on killing anybody, especially not for food or water or anything. Um, all right? So don't turn to violence. Matthew 5, 10 to 12. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. <coughs> Excuse me. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for yet great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Okay? So in every given moment that you know I'm being persecuted because I'm refusing the mark of the beast. I'm following Jesus Christ. I'm not following man. And you're persecuted? Then you know, oh, I'm on the right track. Definitely on the right track. Yeah, because God's watching every decision you make, every thought you have, every word you utter, every action you do, God is watching every single motion. So make it all to glorify him while you're still alive and glorify him in your death too, okay? Just keep your focus on God and on Jesus Christ from here on out, okay? <clears throat> Matthew 6, 25 and also 30 to 34. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought. Okay, so this is a good one. Take no thought for your life, okay? What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body. What ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment, which is clothing, Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which is today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith, therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall I eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? <clears throat> For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. So just first you got to make sure you're right with God. Okay? You're filled with faith and love and obedience. All right? Faith, love, and obedience. Remember those three things. Stay filled with faith, love, and obedience and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. See, if you have those three things, you don't have to worry about anything. God has got you covered, okay? Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And also Proverbs 10, 3. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casts away the substance of the wicked. Okay? So if you're watching these um, uh, channels that tell you how to stock up and, you know, be prepared, have your bug out bag ready, I mean, eh. That's all well and good, but you know, you don't have to pay such close attention to it. Because he's telling us, don't worry about your food and what you're gonna, or your, and your water and what you're gonna wear. God's gonna take care of you. Now, I'm not saying that you should never, I mean, even at a time 
uh, you know, 20 years ago, you should have some extra food and water saved up because you never know what's going to happen. You know, that's just smart. That's just something we do in this world. But if you think you're going to stock up for months and months and months and years and years, uh, and you're going to take care of yourself, or, or, or you got a bunker somewhere, uh, you know, that's just silliness. It's silliness, really, in the eyes of God. Because God's saying, what are you doing all that for? Why are you worrying about all that stuff? I know what you need. I'm going to take care of you. Okay? So don't get too um, hung up on oh, stocking up and stocking up and stocking up. I mean, really. Okay? Just take it easy. Don't have, don't have fear. Take some precautions. Like we take precautions and everything, but don't get carried away, okay? Uh, Nahum 1.7 The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows them that trust in him. He knows if you're trusting in him. Isaiah 66, 13-14 as one whom his mother comforts, so will I comfort you, and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. And when you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like an herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants, and his indignation towards his enemies. See, when Jesus comes back, that's all going to happen all at once. He's going to, he's calling us up and he's pouring out his wrath. You know, it's all happening. Yep, all at once. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 14. And God has both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. That's what it says, the last trump. What trumpets? The trumpets in Revelations. I think it's chapter 7. I think it's, I'm not sure what chapter it is, but it's all on the trumpets. That's what, when we're going to be going through tribulation. For the trumpet shall sound, the last one, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. So no one's going anywhere until the last trumpet. And we shall be changed. Here it is talking about the last trumpet when it sounds. We know we will be here all during every one of the seven trumpets. If you want to know exactly what you will be enduring, please read Revelations chapters 8, 9, and 11, because that describes all the trumpets. So we will be here through all of them. Okay? Matthew 16, 27. <clears throat> For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father, with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Yeah, so those who say works aren't important, your actions aren't important. Following the will of God, living in the will of God isn't important. Well, where's your reward going to be? He's come with his reward. He's promised us a reward should be working towards those rewards. You know, you can't work towards your salvation. I mean, only Jesus did that. He died for us on the cross. He did that work. That was his work, um, um, amongst other work. You know, but he did that. Uh, and if it wasn't for that, we would never be saved because there's no amount of anything we could do to have saved ourselves. You know, what Adam caused, Jesus fixed. Um... So, got to keep that faith strong. Uh, Zephaniah three fifteen to 20. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. 
thou shalt not see evil anymore. There's coming a time you're not going to see evil anymore. When Jesus comes back, remember, when Jesus comes back, the minute he's back, he's reigning. There's no layover time. It's not a time where there's uh, people are going to vote him in. He's here, he's here, and he starts ruling with an iron fist, okay? He rules with iron right away. So as soon as you see our king, he is our king forevermore on this planet. Yep, forevermore. Uh, let's see, it says, Fear thou not, and to Zion let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. He's going to be joying over us with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly, who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee. I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they had been put to shame. At that time I will bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. So at the time that he gathers you, he will bring you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. So as soon as he comes back, he is going to bring you. And where is he going to bring you? Where he's going to be reigning to, in Jerusalem. He's bringing you to Jerusalem. And remember, as he's bringing us to Jerusalem, what else is going on? The whole world is fighting a war against Jerusalem. Like everybody's going to gather against Jerusalem. Second uh, Estrus 16.52 For yet a little, and iniquity shall be taken away out of the earth, and righteousness shall reign among you. So imagine a world without sin. That's where you're going. No one will ever hurt you again. Remember, our bodies will no longer be born in sin and corruptible anymore. So we're going to be born in incorruption when God renews us and changes us and gives us a new body. That's going to be in incorruption, and it's not going to be a body that we're always going to, that we want to sin. We're not going to be born in sin. Okay, there will also be no devil to deceive us and tempt us to sin. I mean, that's just something I can't even imagine. I mean, I try to imagine it, and it makes me happy, but I mean, I can't really imagine it. Can you imagine having a body that never tempts you to sin, and you don't have a devil around or demons around that are tempting you to sin? And you don't have other sinners around you that are tempting you to sin. There is not going to be any more temptation to sin. Nobody's going to be sinning and we're not going to want to sin. See, we're going to be living in love and righteousness and holiness. Just like God, our Father. We're his children. Oh, I can't wait for that day that's going to be just, I mean, I just can't even imagine it. But that's what you have to look forward to. Micah 4, 3, And he shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation. No more wars. Neither shall they learn war anymore. No more wars anymore ever. We will tend to the earth and care for it instead of having leaders trying to destroy it. So remember, before Adam was uh, kicked out of paradise, that's what he did. 
He took care of the land, he tilled the land. Oh, I can't even imagine what that new world is gonna look like. Well, it's gonna be transformed. Can't imagine. It's gonna be really cool though. I know it is. Uh, second Estra, Estras uh, 6, 27 to 28. <clears throat> For evil shall be put out, and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome, and the truth, which has been so long without fruit, shall be declared. Won't that be refreshing, coming out of a world that is built on lies and deceit? You live in a world right now that is built on lies and deceit. Some of you are aware of this. Some are, of you are aware of some of it. And some of you aren't aware at all. Um, but this whole world is built on lies and deceit. So our new world has so much to look forward to. We can't even imagine. We can't imagine because we have a body that's corruptible. We have a body that we were born in sin. There's sin all around us and lies all around us, deceit all around us, and it's been that way since we were babies. So we can't imagine, we can't imagine all the good that awaits us. So remember that when you're going through your persecution. You know, we're all going to have to go through our own persecution. Who knows what it's going to be? It might be sickness. It might be the elements. You know, it might be uh, mental torture. I mean, it might be your family treating you really bad because of your belief. Um, which hurts you, causes you emotional pain. Um, so hang in there and know that it's all worth it and Jesus is coming soon. Um, just keep following God. That's all you gotta do is focus on. Keep your faith, love God, trust in God, and follow his will. Just keep doing those things. Okay, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you soon.